Greetings, welcome back to Astrologaster. I almost said Alice Madness with us, Captain. Oh, please do slap some sense into him. Good morrow, Dean Black. How fare you this day? Well, Dr. Foreman, I must own that I do not fare well. For my recent investments have left me in a rather vexing financial position. Verily, that is ill to hear. Aye, Sir Walter Raleigh's quest for El Dorado failed most woefully. Just as you predicted. <laughs> His ships did return loaded with naught but a few sacks of worthless root vegetables. I cannot fathom it. We are Englishmen. We do not eat vegetables. Really? Aye, a disappointing outcome indeed. Oh, but that is all by the by. For you will be pleased to know that I put my remaining fortune into a new venture so assured of success that I will make all my money back and more. Assured, you say? How very reassuring. Not at all. I have invested in an expedition to intercept a fleet of Spanish ships carrying gold back from the new world. For this expedition, Sir Walter Raleigh will be joined by that famous military genius, Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex. Oh, that one. Whose success is virtually guaranteed. Uh, there is but one small worry, however. Ah, only one? Aye. Tis that Raleigh and Essex set sail full two months past, but there is yet no tidings of them. Such silence is a trifle vexing. Have they yet captured the Spanish treasure ships? Surely no ill has befallen them. A most vexing mystery in I hope something must happen to them. The stars can tell us what has become of this expedition. Right now, I really do hope that something bad happened to them. Black is a lazy fantasist who indulges in an excess of creative thinking. Angels will vest in their best. Angels will vest their blessings upon Black, but he must be patient. God has granted Black good intuition. A violent battle is being waged in a foreign clime. The moon shines its benevolent light upon the Black family fortune. The expedition has been endangered by secret information from an untrustworthy authority. Untrustworthy? How very dare the stars foreshade upon my honor thus. My skill in reading navigational coordinates in the stars is unimpeachable. Black has been careless with his financial legacy. Rayleigh and Essex are sending their ships in the wrong direction and will suffer a several yep, reversal of fortune. Bad tidings for your family's fortune, I fear. The Earl of Essex and Sir Walter Raleigh did sail their fleet into the middle of nowhere, with not a Spanish treasure ship in sight. It would seem their geographical information was at fault, having been obtained from a, uh, a most unreliable and untrustworthy authority. Truly, I am ruined. Soons, my goose is cooked. Mistress Blarg will have me baked into pies. Oh, well, she... I think she did say that. He... oh really? He wastes the fortune. Hey, Mistress Lania, uh, pray come in and take comfort by the fire. The wind is fierce and cold this day. Did you see him this time, Dr. Foreman? Who? He did it again. He ran off the moment he oh. saw me. See who, madam? Your patient, Signor Ferraro. Ah, verily? Indeed, I was expecting him to come for a consultation this day. But he changed his mind and ran off, you say. Huh. How very mysterious. Truly, tis as if all men are determined to use me ill. Surely not all men, madam. I, for one, remain most devotedly at your service. My dear lady, I do not need to read the stars to see that something grave has befallen you. Pray, tell me what it is. 
yesterday I did meet with Mr Shakespeare to discourse upon our new play, which is to open this week at the theatre in Shoreditch. But though I was determined not to confront him about the sonnets he wrote about me, it was difficult to hide the heaviness I did feel in his company. I can well imagine, madam. So then, well, he remarked upon my dark humour, to wit, he said to me, Amelia, your pretty brow does furrow, so I will kiss it smooth. And I sense that you did not receive this well? Indeed, I did not. Forsooth, I was so enraged by this, I... I reversed my flagon of ale full over his head. Ah. Whereon he rose from his stool, declaring I was the most ungrateful and unworthy wench in all of Christendom, and then he flew out of the tavern like... like a bat from out the gates of hell. A most vivid image, and no doubt most apt. Men who work in playhouses are prone to indulging in such melodrama, of course. Why so many ladies care for such men in preference of those employed in solid, stable professions, I shall never understand. And if only that were all. For this morning I saw a bill advertising our play posted on a wall in my street. It bears his name and not mine. Verily? Surely not. Mayhap there has been some error made. Nay. Dr. Foreman, tis no error, for I rushed to the theatre to see what was amiss, but I was refused admittance. Indeed, the player who came to the door denied all knowledge of my collaboration on the play. Methinks Mr. Shakespeare is exacting his petty vengeance upon me for rejecting his sly suit by denying me credit for my work, and he means to deal with me by pretending I do not exist, as if I were a ghost. Or is it he who has become the ghost? In truth, I am not yet sure how that metaphor should work. What monstrous perfidy! Pray tell me what I might do to punish this wretched scribbler. Though I am not adept with a sword, I do have a book that instructs in how to command nefarious spirits. Oh, prithee, sir, I am come not in search of vengeance, but to seek answers. As you know, I have been ill-treated by my husband, and now I am betrayed by Mr. Shakespeare. Pray... Read the stars and answer me this, Dr. Foreman. Will I ever be able to trust, even love, a man again? It depends, I guess. Your choice is so far away, pretty poor. Oh my god. Emilia secretly wishes to commit adultery with a man of high intelligence. Emilia's friends have been unworthy of her confidence. Emilia should give in to her true feelings. God rewards men who invest time in their friendship with comely, comely women. The relationship betwixt Amelia and me is currently wrought by confusion. No, oh my god, I didn't. Amelia's literary legacy has been betrayed by Mr. Shakespeare. Mistress Lanier is ignorant of the love she inspires, but her ignorance will be reversed. Amelia's present adversity may bring a change and new life in the form of a child. Let's try that. Of whether there yet be a man in this world worthy of your trust and affections. Forsooth, I have never seen an arrangement of stars that speaks so clearly. Verily, then pray tell what answer does it give? My dear lady, the answer you seek need not be divined by reading the stars. It may be read in the signs you see before you now. <clears throat> to wit, the answer you seek is right in front of you. I am afraid I do not follow, Dr. Foreman. Tis your feather quill, a half-eaten apple, your desk is a little untidy, and I must confess the symbolism in Flemish still-life painting has always quite confounded me. Take a skull, for instance. What sense does a skull make alongside a bowl? Below. Tis clear to me now, your face was always hid in shadow, but tis you, Mr. Foreman. You are the man who has been prowling me these last months. Dearest, loveliest Amelia, allow me to profess to you my undying admiration for your charms, which are not insignificant. God's womb, et tu, Dr. Foreman. Fie you of all men to betray me thus. <laughs> but it's true. I now see the answer. For I know now never again to trust a man to guide me. Henceforth, I shall write under my own name. And when there are decisions to be made, I shall take my own counsel and make my own judgments. By the by, 
Methinks I do at last understand that prediction you made for me some years ago, Dr. Foreman. The one about how belief is required if I am to succeed. Tis a belief I must hold not in the inevitability of my own personal success, but of the successes of the women who will come after me. Farewell, Dr. Foreman. And clean your desk. Damn. It is quite disgusting. Well, not like I had any choice there. Oh, but I've already got a lot of recommendation from her, so that's alright. Sir, I must thank you for your diligent care of my husband, Nicholas. Your efforts to disabuse him of his fanciful notions are much appreciated by his family. Please continue to speak true to him, that he may one day come to his senses and peace may be restored to our household. Your current long-suffering wife, Sarah Mag. I don't remember who that was. Hello, Mr. Lancelot. Good day to you, young sir, and well met. You are Lancelot Moore of Middlesex, are you not? What an honor it is to welcome a son of the great house of Moore to my humble consulting chambers. Tis indeed I, Lancelot Moore. I will own it. But hear this. My family is ignorant of my designs in coming here, and I wish them to remain so. Which is why I come to you, Mr. Foreman. For me thinks you are not such a man who would ever find himself in the company of a family such as ours. Ah, well, you may count upon my discretion, Mr. Moore. And what is the matter that brings you this day? It is that my family wish me to marry my wretched cousin Barbara. And I take it you would not wish to comply? Nay, I verily would not. Cousin Barbara is a vile little minx. She loves nothing more than to sport with me and play cruel japes. Last Christmas, she even hid a dead mouse in my mince pie. Ew. The lady does seem most spirited. The lady? <laughs> oh, pish. Cousin Barbara is hardly a lady, for she is not 14 years of age. It is most unnatural to ask a grown man to wed a child. Indeed it is. Tis my belief that in these enlightened times we should consider... Verily, Barbara be damned. My heart belongs to a true woman, not a freckled, scrawny slip of a girl. A full-blossomed woman. A woman, you say? I, Marion. My other cousin. I see. Ah, oh, Marion. So beguiling are her shapely charms. Oh, to lie, if not to die, in Marion's arms. So soft. Her lips, so sweet her face. Oh, how I yearn for her embrace. In me she hath such passion stirred. The fever rises. In... Okay. But nay, I pray for death and would be martyred if from her I be thus parted. And so you see, you must help me forestall this wretched marriage so that I might wed my sweet cousin Marion. Mr. Foreman? Mr. Foreman? Uh, 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 yeah, yes, indeed. Uh, let us see what the stars advise. How might Mr. Coward. Moore avoid this marriage to his cousin Barbara? Did they really mar got married to cousins? Or are they like close cousins or no? If more spreads a rumor about Barbara being sexually active, the marriage plans will be abruptly cancelled. This house suggests Barbara is with child, she may not be as chaste as she seems. An appeal to Moore's vanity may induce him to travel abroad. Moore will be able to extract himself from this engagement once he has come of age and has control of his fortune. Moore should betray his family by serving his country, he should go to war, he will die probably. Barbara is secretly unhappy about the marriage. God's aid will come via cousin Barbara, who is both intelligent and rebellious. What does Moore's intuition tell him about this marriage? Therein lies the key to unraveling this engagement. I think I would like to blackmail. I will not blackmail. Ah, yes. 
you know what? Star suggests the most excellent remedy for your problem. Then out with it, Sira. What is it? You are advised to spread a rumor that your cousin Barbara is not the maiden your family believe her to be. Indeed, the stars indicate that she may even be with child. God's breakfast! What an excellent plan! Indeed, not only would I be saved from this marriage, befouling Cousin Barbara's reputation would serve as a fitting punishment for her wicked japes. I thank you, Foreman. You have been most helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, that's gonna be... Oh, he was little pleased. Okay. As Spanish ships near our shores, the Queen's Ground troops prepare for what promises to be a blood-soaked slaughter of Englishmen by continental Catholic suffrages. With England's coast undefended, experts predict Spanish ships will be sailing up the Tamiz to London within days. Sources in the Royal Court say the Queen is more than a little vexed about the absence of the Royal Navy, which experts describe as lost. Oh, hello! Blessed even, Dr. Foreman. Mistress Payne, what brings you in such weather? It is most dangerous to be about in it. Oh, it takes more than a little wind and rain to forestall me from doing the Lord's work. Besides, foul weather is naught but God's righteous vengeance upon London for the sinful debauchery of its inhabitants. Verily? Then I dread to think what northerners get up to of an evening. Pray heed me carefully, Dr. Foreman, for tis on a most pressing matter that I am come. Doubtless you have heard the news. The Spanish Armada does sail once again towards England's shores. It seems this latest Armada was most unexpected. Well, as tis oft said, no one expects the Spanish Armada. Tis very grave this time, for I have heard tell that our own warships are far away at sea, and with our coasts undefended, a Catholic horde may soon be sailing up the Thames to slay us all. Aye, our situation is most grave indeed. But what would you have me tell you, Mistress Payne? I wish to know whether the English fleet will arrive home in time to defend our shores. Or might we ordinary folk be compelled to take up arms to defend ourselves? Dr. I don't Dr. know! No, I don't know! <laughs> no. What may? Am I ready to beat off the... Uh, prithee, madam, let us pray the need never arises. Uh, Perchance the stars will offer us some reassurance. Will the Royal Naval Fleet return home in time to defend England from the Spanish Armada? Can't stars say that they don't know? The Royal Navy is absent due to reckless and misguided pursuit of gold. Ambitious will be thwarted by confusion. Unpleasantness will result from a cunning plan to steal goods. Yeah, this, definitely this one. Mistress Payne must rouse her neighbors to take up arms. The authorities cannot be trusted to uphold their duty to defend ordinary Englanders. Catholic evil angels will have their plans. Uh, Catholic evil angels will have their plans thwarted by a deadly, unpredictable event. The Spanish fleet will be delayed due to idleness of their sailors. This one. Madam. Know you of Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, or of Sir Walter Raleigh, perchance? Oh, young Lord Devereux, such a talented young man. My niece is especially taken with him. Well, it would seem the pair did take the royal fleet on an expedition to intercept and seize gold being transported back to Spain from the New World. But their plan went awry, and now they are lost at sea. I am afeard that, short of a miracle, a Spanish invasion is indeed imminent. Her Majesty would risk her realm and the lives of her subjects for the sake of guild. No. Then our present danger does not surprise me. England's downfall will be God's punishment for our Queen's greed and avarice. Uh. Well, to be fair to Her Majesty, I do not imagine she gave Devereux and Raleigh permission to. Oh, my 
days. With a Spanish invasion nigh, I know not how to calm my anxious passions. Methinks I shall take to bed with Paul and Matthew this evening. My what? Uh, oh, yes, I see. The book of Paul and the book of Matthew. Oh, okay. Uh, Holy Scripture does give great comfort to a distressed mind. Uh, God keep you well, Mistress Payne. I hope she meant the book. Sir, I must express my displeasure with you, for I am exceeding vexed. You advised me to put it about that my cousin had lost her virtue, and whilst this did spare me the inconvenience of having to marry her, my aunt and uncle are now calling me a lying knave, among other egregious insults I shall not list here. And now that my cousin cannot marry and will thus be forever an idle spinster, she has vowed to dedicate her life to destroying mine. Snitches get leeches in their bridges. Is but one of the many threats she has made against my person. I hope you are happy with the mischief you have wrought, Foreman. Your exceeding vexed current. Lancelot Morsk. Letter of. Oh, no, okay. Hmm, interesting. Good morrow, Mr. Mug. Back again so soon. And yet your red spots do seem to have faded. I of the spotted fever I am cured. For I'm glad. Not, those spots have near vanished and no new ones are appearing. But my wife does swear they were the work of fleas, and she beat the rugs and banished the dogs from the house to rid us of them. She'll be beating and banishing me next if she has her way. Well, I am glad to hear you are faring better. Uh, what brings you this day? I have a humoral imbalance and need treating for it. A humoral imbalance, you say? Well, it is true that an imbalance of humours can affect a man's mood. For instance, an excess of black bile, which is a cold, dry humour, can provoke feelings of melancholy. Whereas yellow bile is... It is hot and dry. I thank you for the explanation, Dr. Foreman, but I did learn all about humours when I took supper with my friend, Mistress Ollingworth. She has a humoral imbalance and takes medicine for it. Hence, I am come this day for medicine to treat my own imbalance. I see. <sighs> what mental symptoms are you experiencing? Any unusual or troubling feelings? I am very troubling. What? Why, I find myself a fretting and a pacing all the day long. Even my wife has remarked upon it. Anxiety and agitation. Uh, pray tell. Did these feelings begin before or after you spoke with your friend, Mistress Ollingworth? Hmm. Let me see now. After me thinks. Aye, after. Why? Does that matter? Yes, yep. quite possibly. Uh, but let us see what these stars do have to say. What humoral imbalance does ail my querent Nicholas Mug? Okay, but before that, I need to check. Mug, 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 we are nearly there with him. Uh. Mug is mildly choleric. A humoral imbalance of choler can occasion symptoms of anger, impatience, and irritability. Or, oh no, Mug is suffering from constipation and a related physical, fi psycho psychological condition. This indicates a physical, psy psycho, oh, psychological factor. This suggests a mild imbalance of film. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. He likes hearing that his is ill. Mistress Ollingworth, and I wish to tell her all about it. Aye, it is done. You have a choleric temperament, brought on by a minor imbalance of yellow bile. It does often induce feelings of irritability and impatience in the sufferer, and in severe cases, it can provoke outbursts of anger. I see. How very interesting. We must counter the excess of this hot, dry humour with wet and cooling elements. Uh, take this powder of violets and salt and boil it in some water. Then you must drink the infusion once it is cooled. I thank you for this medicine, Dr. Foreman. You're welcome. But may I trouble you for twice the dose of it? For if the symptoms be what you say, I think my wife had best be taking it as well. <laughs> I thank you, wife. 
is done with you, and so am I. Thank you very much. Oh no. Oh! Provi proving once again that God loves England more than our Catholic enemies, the Spanish naval fleet has been defeated by a mighty storm that has been raging in the English Channel for nigh on three days. What remains of the Armada has fled back to Spain. Beachcombers are advised to wait for the storm to abate before losing corpses that have washed ashore. Not you again. I don't care. What do you want? Oh, Sarah, I, I have dire need of your counsel. Pray calm yourself, sir, and tell me of this urgent affair. Oh, verily, it is most urgent. A fair maiden has my heart. A maid with hair of shining gold and eyes so blue, the finest sapphires grow pale with envy. But she is the most pious and demure in nature, and has many other suitors. How might I win her favor? Golden hair? Uh, but in our last consultation... Uh, let me see here in my notes. Ah, yes. Uh, you told me your heart belonged to... A maid with hair of onyx black that doth make the finest ebony go grey with envy. You mean my cousin Marion? <laughs> Pish! That was naught but a childish fancy. I bid you, foreman, pray focus on the matter at hand. Okay. Do not help me win my true love's favour. I'll try. My bursting heart will tear asunder. My soul will wither unto... Aye, aye, as you will. Let us see what guidance can be had from the stars. Yes. How may oh. Lancelot Moore win the heart of this golden-haired maiden? I don't know, I don't care. A sudden religious conversation is strongly advised. Moore's hope will be realized, but he must be self-disciplined and impatient. I think this is the one we should go. The maid's secret nature is hidden beneath a veil of false religious fa favor. It would appear that Moore has a brutish nature. Moore may win the lady's hand in marriage with jewelry and fine things. Moore should lie about the size of his fortune, a trifling task for such an oversourced vehicle. The maid's father has a deceitful business partner. I will go with this one. It would seem the lady is a modest and pious maid, for the stars urge you to exercise patience and restraint. Although your rivals be fierce, your the sword must remain in its sheath, if you take my meaning. Oh. Keep my sword sheathed? Oh. oh! You think I do verily use my sword to fight with? Oh, ye gods, no! The sword I wear is purely ornamental. If you paid more attention to the current fashion, you would know that, former. You take no hint. Oh, never mind. What I mean to say is that your attack on the maid's heart must be spiritual. Have you considered converting to Puritanism? Only temporarily, of course. God's teeth! The heavens advise me to become a Puritan? <laughs> In truth, this is ill to hear, for black is not a becoming color on my person. Still, the stars do speak truth about my love, for she does oft prattle on about sin and hellfire. Good day to you, Foreman. I must go at once You're to welcome. my tailor to be fitted for the latest and most loathsome Puritan fashions. Did it work? Was little pleased for, with me. Okay. And that's gonna be it for today. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon.